we sent two, two presentations to discuss the nymphs and uh, tree of leaf hoppers that show uh, that are useful, that have useful taxonomic characters. And now we're going to see one about tree hoppers, which have an extreme variety. Um, So we can get to it, I guess. So first, I'm going to discuss the principal characters, sweets used for adults in the classification. And then I'm going to discuss the characters of the nymphs. And, uh, and then I'll show you the adults. And uh, the biological trend, the polygon tiny. And then, and then we'll get to the nymph morphology and the index on the classification. So in tree hoppers, the classification, like everything else, is based on adults. And there are five principal character suites. The four-wing, the four-wing, nine-wing position and the coverage of the, of the wing by the pronotum are mostly useful at the subfamily and tribal levels. Leg Q taxi, particularly basically hooded CD on the, on the legs, is also very important and comes more into play at the tribal level. And the form of the pronotum and the genitalia, mostly at the genus and species level. Now, none of these features are present in the nymphs, but the nymphs have their own features that are present in the adults. And this leads to a drastic difference between the morphology of the adults and the immatures. And here are two examples. That these are not in polygon tiny. But in the principal characters of nymphs, uh, well, some of them are these large spines or scoli on the, all scoli on the, from the head to the tail. The, there are large uh, CD with, uh, on swollen bases, which can be conical, it can be rod like, or, they, or the CD can be paleate. There are different relative sizes of the tarsal segments. And when there are scoli present, uh, they may have scoli or they may not. And they, they may have scoli in the back or all around it or on long stuck bases. So here, uh, with uh, almost 100 characters and more than 300 character states, this leads to a wide variety of morphology. <coughs> that are useful from the family all the way to the tribal level. At the family level, if the, uh, the best, one of the best characters from membracity is that the segment nine of the abdomen is ventrally fused, uh, which form, forming a tube that holds the anal segments. The anal segments have hydrophobic hair that can be exerted and holds a drop load of honeydew for the ants. So in polygon tiny, I have 20 of the 22 genera and about a third of the species. And here are the first nine. A dippy, uh, you can see the first one, it often has contrasting colors with pronotum. You can also see that uh, the wings are, are partially covered and the, uh, the medial and radial veins are often compressed and pushed forward on the wing. Uh, sort of complementing the protection of the the pronotum and the, the coriaceous at the base. And some of them have lateral carotid on the pronotum also. Is the next nine. And these are mostly neotropical. I, I shouldn't say it that way. Almost none of these live photographs were taken by me. But almost all the specimens examined were some things I've collected over the last 40 years in the neotropics. These are the last two, um, including Antianthe, which is currently unplaced in, in the subfamily. And I'm placing it in, in polygon adults, especially. The three genera I'm missing are not going to provide, uh, I don't think, any surprises if the images are discovered. The first one, is only known by the holotype and has those contrasting colors that are sometimes in a dippy. The second set across Dicophora and Venetia might be synonyms of taxonomic work that's been done 
and Spermella and Pobulia are most certainly synonyms, although an unpublished master's thesis in 1980, he kept Spermella and moved some species of Pobulia into it. But, uh, but I think they're probably synonyms. So in terms of the biology, there's some, uh, well, you might have noticed already, they all tend their eggs, and they all protect their eggs, and, uh, and their nymphs. The eggs are partially inserted in soft plant tissue, often on the, on the, on the underside midribs of leaves, and, uh, and so they're very vulnerable to parasitic waste. In terms of uh, mutualisms, some are always tended by ants, and, and for example, at the, at the top, the diphopra, the tending ants are usually opportunistic, opportunistic taxa, like um, Azteca and Ectotoma that also drink from extra-floral nectaries. And the exception here is Formophora, which are all, they've been observed independently in Colombia, Guyana, uh, French Guiana, in, in Ecuador, and Brazil. And in every case, they're only tended by the Cephalodian eggs. And uh, the exclusivity is not given to form up, is not given to the ants. I mean, the ants will, will also tend other tree hoppers, but this is only tended by the Cephalodians. There are other taxa, like Enya, that are never tended by ants, and how that's accomplished, we don't really know. There's a paper by Hinton in 1977 on the genus Delamichia, which is basically everything we know about the biology of the genus. And he did lots of uh, informal experiments, like submitting, uh, putting the female on eggs underwater and still safe there, and also did some things of putting it an egg on female on eggs in the middle of an ant trail, and the ants avoided it. Suggest, and he suggested that there might be some uh, ant repellent pheromone that the hoppers are being. And I put the polygraph update here on the lower right. This is the, there's several references in papers from mostly from Costa Rica saying that these are never tended by ants. But in my own experience, I found it not attended during the day, but attended at night by an ant. And I'm not sure if that's a factor of the ant biology or the, the tree upper biology. So let's get to the immatures. First, I'm going to show you five genera that show that they have a unique synapomorphy within all tree hoppers. And that's the single uh, scolus on segment number nine. And this one has a full complement, this Antilia has a, basically a full complement on the, on the uh, abdomen of the scoli, and it has uh, scolus on, and scoli on the mesonotum, but not the mesonotum. And you'll see that again in Biotopsis. Again, long, uh, I don't know if I can it. No. You can see that the horn is a little different of the nasal pronotum, a little different than the antilia. Um, but it has structurally pretty much the same. It has a single the dorsal skull, so it's like the nine, and the full complement on the abdomen, and a pair on the, on the mesonotum, but not the mesonotum. This is pobulia, which again has the same structure. Um, the in this species, the mesonotum the the skull is small, but in that varies, the length of that varies according to species. And polyglypta, again, the same thing. A single, midnor a single dorsal skull is the same as nine, full complement on the abdomen, and uh, mesonotal skull, they can be long or short, and note nothing on the mesonotum. Here's a close up of the Long mesonormal skulls, mesonormal skulls, and those. Oh, sorry. So these look. 
These look pretty similar in lateral view, but if you look at the dorsal view, one has a, has, it looks like it has a bifurcate uh, pronotum, but in fact, those are pronotal scoli. Because if it, if it was a bifur, bifurcate pronotum, that would be reflected in the adult, which it is not. And this is what I'm moving to. I'm moving in Dante to Polygonconi because it shares a single mid dorsal scolus in segment 9. It almost has a full complement of scoli on the other, but it's missing on segment 7. It has the mesonormal scoli, but not the metanormal scoli. And if you look at the lower left, you'll see the pair of scoli like we just saw in Polygonconi. This, this new placement is also supported by phylogenetic analyses, which put uh, NTMD close to, or, or sister to, or within uh, all of change. There's some other, so the other five that are definitely a group, and I would expect that them to all be together in whatever phylogenetic, phylogenetic analysis that includes all those species, all those genera. But there's some others that are easy to identify. And one of them is Formacra, which is the only genus in the tribe that has the ventral, ventral side of the segment 9 longer than the dorsal side. Then this occurs in a few other triopters, but nothing else. Uh, Notogonioides is another very easy to recognize genus because the, the segment 9 scoli are very widely displayed instead of a more or less parallel or slight display. Um, uh, Adipi has more variability. Sometimes scoli are absent, sometimes they're present. Uh, but they all seem to have this large curved pronotum. Uh, you can see that the scale bar, that this is a minute thing, and there's really not much going on. Like you'll see in some of the other genera, this has a dead short CD. This is Philomichia, again, from his, uh, the photos from Hinton's work. Uh, and then on the then on the lower left, I is part of a long series without any adult associated. So I was assuming that it's Philomichia. Then uh, on the right, you see an image from the online version of Hinton's paper, but if you actually go to the paper in printed version, it's more appealing. And you can see that it has the long projection in front and in back. It even has the black outline of the forming pad. Kairos uh, is another genus that doesn't have a lot going on. Um, it has a fairly long uh, nodal tail. There are two, two genera that have a uh, dorsal carina on the name genera. This Dicophora and Hemiptica. Enya is one of the species that's demonstrated by ants, and, and they, do, they often have a pointed pronotum, and that's reflected on the name pronotum. The, the last skull line is yeah, see in other uh, genera. And in Gelastigonia, I would like to say that this bipodal pronotum is a character of the genus, but in fact, it's only one species, the one I have, that has that feature. The others don't have that, so uh, they'll mostly be identified, I think, by the uh, clusters of the large uh, Pelagi along the end of the course. Karanasi is, is an Indian genus that is uh, very common on, on blackberry. And it's also, it's also the physically largest genus. And the nymphs, so the nymphs are large, they aggregate. The, the nymphs have, uh, it's not a carina, it's, it's convex, but it's a longitudinal convex ridge, which helps identify it. Um, well, this is uh, veterinaria, 
that has sparse long scoli and a slight bend in the ventral side of the dog's behind. <coughs> There's Bethesda, which also has a bend in the second nine. This is polygonotonies, which I only have uh, from a uh, photograph. And you can see it's been similar. It's definitely not, although the, the, it looks like, the adults look like some of the genera. The stems are, are unlike, they have a neural form that's unlike any other genera. Again, it's liking other skull like the skull <coughs> identified better. And the media is, I also only have from photograph. <coughs> And it has a short and it's go line on the end. So the results, I only want you to remember a few things. First, the nymphs lack all the principal characters used in the higher taxa and tree hoppers. And but they have characters of their own, which are useful at all taxonomic levels. The females guard eggs and nymphs. Some are tended by ants, some are not. And there are five, uh, five genera have a synapomorphy of that thing on the dorsal scolus. Um, and that impacts the classification by moving anti anti into the tribe. The future directions are complete the formal description of the New World Free Opera genera, tribe by tribe. This is part of, of a longer term project that I'm doing with Adam. Walter, and uh, find a more rare bits, especially Dariani. In Smiliani, especially in Polygonotiny, it's very easy to associate the dulcet and nymphs because they occur together. Uh, but in Dariani, for example, they're solitary and not intended by ants, and they're difficult to find and difficult to associate with the dulcet. And then fill in missing genera. But I have pretty good coverage in Polygonotiny. And if you see any, if you're out collecting and find an adult, and maybe even a 10 year old adult, look for the immatures and please send those to me so I can increase my coverage. And there's a few uh, things I cited, the infant paper, um, and the Dale Vine that I have not published master's thesis, that she, let me use her drawings. And other people send me, let me use their photographs. And if Alyssa Seaman, who just got a permanent position in my lab, took all the, all the photos and things. Thank you.